Welcome. Now in this module, we're going to take a look at CIS control number 16, account monitoring and control. And for account monitoring and control, this is a second in the series of modules. Now this is the CIS controls version seven layout. We are now on control number 16, which is the last control in the foundational series. This is the system entity relationship diagram as discussed. We have an alerting reporting analytics system, and then we're going to be using identity and access management systems, multi-factor authentication systems, configuration enforcement systems, and there are workforce members and computing systems on which these, will, these controls will be applied. So let's take a look at control 16.5, encrypt transmittal of username and authentication credentials. Ensure that all account usernames and authentication credentials are transmitted across networks using encrypted channels. This is because it's fairly easy to install network sniffers and malicious users or malicious attackers could easily find out what our credentials in when we're logging into an application um, or logging in into uh, some type of portal, for example, and or we're trying to authenticate ourselves for access to some system, for example. So it's very important that in, we need to encrypt the transmittal of username and authentication credentials. And this also requires that the protocols which are set for authentication when uh, we are setting up and configuring authentication requires that those um, protocols are used which require multi-factor authentication and encrypted the correct encrypt, encryption protocols. 16.6, .6, maintain an inventory of accounts. Maintain an inventory of all accounts organized by authentication system. So this is um, organizing uh, the inventory of all the accounts um, which are, we are going to use uh, for the authentication systems. 16.7, establish process for revoking access. Establish and follow an automated process for revoking system access by disabling accounts immediately upon termination or change of responsibilities of an employee or contractor. Disabling these accounts instead of deleting accounts allows preservation of audit trails. So as you know, many people join the organization, many people leave the organization, many people may be terminated, many people move around in the organization, many people will go on leave. And there are so many accounts, uh, which we in the previous control, 16.6, .6, we had discussed that we need to make an inventory of all the accounts so that we know who are who are the people who are giving who are who are uh, accessing the systems who are these people and what access have we given so that inventory needs to be made and once an inventory is made uh, for all of the uh, uh, for all of the accounts then after that we need to make sure that we also revoke the access when people go on leave or when they are terminated or then the access needs to be changed when their responsibilities change, for example. So that's very important. And usually what happens in organizations is that a lot of, you know, there may be 2,000 people working in the organization and there may be several thousand, 15,000 accounts, for example, because several people are accessing different accounts and there are multiple thousands of accounts which are created. And usually people will leave the organization or go on leave and the attackers will use the dormant accounts which are just sitting there and uh, they are not being utilized and no one will even know if you will access them or make a change to them. So attackers utilize such accounts for malicious purposes. 16.8, disable any unassociated accounts. Disable any account that cannot be associated with the business process or business owner. So accounts should not just sit there and, and be created if they are not uh, authorized and if they are not created for a certain need. Um, because certain, any such account which is created, it may be used by an attacker or a malicious user.